It's a season of lifting. The Lord said a lot of people that were mocked for their loyalty and their standing for righteousness. They shall be honored in this season. Say many of them shall come out of obscurity. Out of the place of their training and probation. And they shall be launched into limelight ministry. And the mainstream ministry. And the many that were celebrated shall be abased. Beginning from this year, you will begin to see many things happen. God is going to alter the topography of Christianity in Nigeria and in the nations beyond. You will be removing scepters of authority, crowns from the head of some people, taking thrones. essence of this monument is to teach but if we go on this tangent we will lose the service just be calm try to calm your spirit down something will leave heaven I told you today to you to not be fake it will not be stage managed to be pure from the office of the administrator Second, first Samuel chapter number 2 from verse 22. You still remember the reading of yesterday? You still remember it? See, now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel. And how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all these people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people to transgress. If a man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto the voice of their father. Why? Because the Lord will slay them. Yesterday, we were able to see how that Reuben was given 40 years to repent. Before judgment came. The day the judgment came, it looks as if Jacob was a wicked man. The day judgment came, it looked as if Jacob was a man who never can forgive. But nobody saw that 40 years was given to Reuben to repent. Did you see what we read in that place just now? Go back to 24. No, no, sorry, leave it there. The B part. He said, notwithstanding, they did what? They hacking not unto the voice of their father. Why? Because the Lord will slay them. If they had repented, would the Lord slay them? Say, but they hacking not. The 
COVID-19 is it pandemic and pandemic that came was meant to afflict the world, particularly the church and Africa. You see, you are a church or you are part of the church and then you are an African. So you see that the team was a double barrel attack against your life. Then somebody will now say, okay, if God saw what the kind of havoc he was going to wreak, why will God allow it? You will always speak like men and speak from the standpoint of the flesh until God grants you an opportunity to use the vistas of heaven to look through a situation. And can I counsel? Anytime you don't have the heaven's perspective on the situation, no matter how real, no matter the evidence on ground on, the, on an issue, uh, you are not permitted to talk about it. Because the only truth, the only reality of any matter is God's perspective. Somebody say, I hear. Do you understand what I'm saying? Did people die during the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic? Did people die? Why would God allow people to die if he's a loving father? You know, those kind of questions come. But when you now go back to the vistas of heaven, God does not do things basically because of your need. He does things because of his purpose. In fact, you, as an existence on earth today, you exist for his pleasure. All things were created for his pleasure, not to meet your needs. Creation and life is bigger than that your need. There is something that is a bigger picture. It is called the purpose of God. There is a reason why God does everything and there is a reason why he allows everything. Do you get it? No. The COVID, when it came on our nation, Nigeria, many wouldn't understand why God allowed it and on Africa, particularly. It was the COVID-19 that came to remove the cobweb that was in the eyes of many people. The scale that was covering many eyes was lifted during the COVID. Before this time, we concentrated on building cathedrals than building men. And our cathedrals counted for nothing when the lockdown came. And that was to tell us that the church was beyond a building. So when Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He was not talking about putting block upon block. He was talking about putting his spirit, his word, and every gifting that is needed to bring a man into conformity with the image of Christ. That you will resemble Christ from the inside to the outside. Both in character, in nature, in essence, and also in power and authority. The COVID revealed the weakness of the church. It revealed so much. of how we have deviated from the original pattern of heaven. The COVID came only on the Christians. The lockdown was put only on unbelievers. I want to know, I'm asking. It was for everybody. In that same lockdown, husbands and wives who had been living like cat and dog, and you know they just go to work early in the morning by 5 o'clock and they return at home by 10 eat food, sleep, wake up the next day and they're off. Weekend that they're not going to work, they're going to, you know so they, they, they're just living just they're already divorced but living in the same house as co-tenants it was the COVID lockdown that revealed all those things because the affliction to live with that kind of a woman, with that kind of a man was imposed on everybody that had that kind of situation. So you have an option to either finally separate or you settle. 
I wish somebody heard what I'm saying. Many children became more addicted to um, to the websites and to online um, social media and all that stuff on the account of the lockdowns. Parents had to buy data for their children by force to be able to keep them. While some children were growing spiritually, some were being hijacked by the enemy all in the lockdown. Some people had time to have personal fellowship with God that their job took away from them for a long time. How many of you are aware that pastors were dying like chicken last year? And a year before, you hear of a pastor preaching and he slums and dies. Have you heard something like that? You have a pastor that lies down and they don't wake up again. Pastors were walking over fatigued. They don't care to check their BP. They don't check to, care to check their sugar level. You know what I'm saying? And they're just walking for the Lord. The body is getting tired and there was no room for retreat, no room for rest. The COVID was what came and gave balance. You understand? Even in the midst of that rest, many people were still not resting. Because they were still preaching almost every day on social media. But at least it was better that you were not going up and down and the rest. Just a matter of, you know. But what many people don't understand was that heaven actually gave the church mercy. It was the mercy of God that was being extended to the church. So that the situation that happened to Reuben, I wish somebody had me. So that the situation that happened to Hophni and Phineas. not come upon the church. It was a time that God gave to us. Anybody who truly retreated in that season will have an aspect that God will reveal to you. God will show you you. Beyond the healing on social media, beyond the full worship. You know what I'm saying now? That large gathering of people you have following you and healing you. When you went back into the closet to pray, God will show you some spots. Up till today, I've not been able to lift this, my right hand, straight like I can do with this one. I was on a seven days dry fast during the lockdown. And on the third day, the Lord came to my room. And he touched I've been praying to God for restoration of the hand completely because I'm learn I've learned the lesson. I'm still learning it. It's a close companion. You know, the Lord, the Bible says when, 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 when Jacob came to Peniel, after he had tried to use all his gimmicks and all he had, and it didn't work for him again, he, he must meet Esau. I don't, if I try to go there, I will, I will digress so far, and the journey this morning is far. Anyway, it's a morning session. Put uh, Genesis 28 on the board. It's a morning session, so we can try it a little. Are we still here? Go to verse 10. And Jacob went out from Bethsheba and went toward Haran. This was when he was running from his father's house. And he left home with what? A staff. Right? He was running for his dear life because Esau had vowed to kill him. Is that not? Jacob the supplanter, Jacob the manipulator, did not care to stand to fight for his father's property and for inheritance. Do we understand? After he took the blessing, the mother said, run to my brother Laban. So she was, he was running for his dear life. And he ran from home with only what? A staff. But I hope you know that Jacob was a man that can do anything to get what he wants. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night. Because the sun was set and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillow. 
How many of you have slept on the ground before? On the floor? You have slept on the floor? You are sure? Okay, how many of you have gone for a crusade or for camp meeting or something and had need to sleep on the floor? Will you be sincere with me this morning? How many of you have used stone for a pillow? No, if you have, I want to see. Stone. The highest you will use, maybe carry one of your clothes. Is that not? Or your seal pass. Or bag. Shoe for pillow. So who have tried stone before? Can somebody try it tonight? Then you go, just gather stone as you are closing from here. You just put it under your bed and when you lie down, put the stone. Nobody used stones for pillow. So it's got that what was happening here was beyond Jacob. Do you understand? He said, and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in the place to sleep. Yes. And he dreamed it. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of, the, of God descending and ascending. Right? You say, yes, sir. That's why many people are deceiving you, even on Facebook. Because you don't pay attention. As well, he's a man of God, so anything he says is true. The Bible says the Berean Christians were more noble than them of Thessalonica. Why? Because they go back to check the, the scriptures to see if the things saw, I mean, Paul told them be true. Was it descending and ascending? Where was the stone? On earth or in heaven? So if something is leaving the earth, what do you call it? When it's coming down. Which wood did he see ascending and descending? Where do angels stay? So how can they be ascending? It means that they descended. The stones that Jacob was using to put his head on were part of the stones that Abraham used, his grandfather, to lay an altar in that place. And the altar that Abraham raised two generations before him had already brought angels from heaven. So when he lay on the stones, he was connected to that same altar. And the angels began to ascend, not descend. He was not bringing angels from heaven. Angels were already here. Do we understand what I'm passing across? Now look at it now. That's not even the emphasis. Look at the emphasis here. This is the emphasis. And we read it together. One, two, three, go. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereupon thou liest. They, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. Let's leave the B part and look at the A part. What did he say? Did you see that? It's God of who? Abraham and God of Isaac. But what do you call God today? This was God talking here. Say, I am the God of thy father Abraham and of Isaac. Right? At this point, he was not yet the God of Jacob. Fast forward because of time. Go to verse 18. 18, no, first of all. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone, are you seeing it? That he put for his pillows. He now knows, he discovered that these were not normal stones. He now discovered that they don't use stones for pillows. <laughs> Let's leave it. And set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it, right? Now be careful now. Follow the next verse. <coughs> what did he do? 
And he called the name of that place Bethel. The house of God, right? He said, but the name of the city was called Luz at first. That's what they call it. But because of his encounter and his revelation, he couldn't call it Luz. He said, this place is Bethel. Go to the next verse. Can we read? He said, and Jacob vowed a vow, saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, yes, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. Did you see that? You are not getting it. He said, you are the God of Abraham, my father. You are the God of Isaac. But I'm giving you condition to adopt you as my God. Are we ready for this money at all? <laughs> okay, let's complete it so that I will say something because of the prevailing thing that I've been spreading up and down. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. That's Bethel. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tent unto thee. What is the tent? The tent means 10%. And what is the 10%? Tight. You see, ignorant people argue about tight because they don't understand the principle of tight. The only reason why he agreed to give God his tight is because God will become his God. What will God do before he become his God? Go back. You see, when you know these simple things, you will not talk whether the tight, I mean, tightening is before the law, after the law, or post law, pre law, and whatsoever. All those things are just polit I mean, theological jargons. Are we listening here? You must understand why a thing is established. What did God call him? What did God call himself, sorry? So his father Abraham, did he give tithe? Why did he give tithe? The Lord blessed him. Right? He went to battle came back from battle with spoils of war. And out of the success from the war, he gave 10%. So it's 10%, I mean normally, if you are normal, it's 10% not telling you simply that 10% belongs to your source. 10% belongs to your owner. Whoever you give your 10% to is a statement you are making in the spirit. That I'm acknowledging. He said, I'm the Lord your God. I'm the one who gave the power to get wealth. I give you the opportunities. I give you the favor. I give you the skill. I give you the strength. I give you the health. So if you acknowledge that I'm the one who does all this for you. And you get all this money. In fact, the money you own, all is my own. In the first place. But 10% out of it is acknowledging. Your loyalty to me that you acknowledge that I'm the source and then that you are a steward willing to receive instruction for the remaining 90. I wish somebody heard that. Because initially, if he's the one that gives you power to get wealth, then he's the owner of the wealth. So no percent even belongs to you. But you give 10% as an acknowledgement and as a statement that you are the owner and you are what? The source. You are my owner and you are my source. Our loyalty to the Lord is also tied to tithing. It's beyond the money. It's beyond the 10%. It's beyond whatever 10% you give to the Lord. It's about acknowledging that the source is him. It's a very crucial matter. Do we get it? So Jacob must have seen Abraham give tithe. He must have seen Isaac give tithe. Are we listening now? But he doesn't give tithe. Nothing concerns him. Why? God is not his God. But he came to the negotiating table with the Lord. But that's
that's not even the essence for that. I just said, let me correct something quickly. Go back to 21. Okay. Sorry, go back to 20. Is it, and Jacob bowed the vow saying, if God will do what? So if, if he's not with you, he's not your God. If he's going to be your God, he must be with you. Right? And will do what? Keep me in this way, protection. Not just his presence, but he must give you protection. If he's your God, he will protect you. If he's your God, he will fight for you. Are we listening here? And will give me bread to eat. If he's your God, he will not only protect you, he will provide. Are you seeing it? And raiment to put on is still provision. Go to the next verse. So that I do what? Peace. To his father's house, how? How can you talk of coming back to your father's house in peace when Esau planned to kill you? He must be more than Esau. Somebody's not following. He must be more than Esau. He must be able to conquer Esau and bring peace to Jacob to be his God. Is that not? Then 22 again. I want you to sink before we leave here. He said, and this stone shall, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house, and all that thou shalt give me, I shall surely give the tent unto thee. So where did he say you shall be my God? Is it 19? Go to 21. Okay, sorry. Then shall the Lord be my God. When you bring me back in peace. Did you see that? So if, if you notice from verse 21, or rather 22, is what he will do for God. You are not getting it. 20 is what God will do for him. So it becomes a covenant. You get it? Can he provide for himself? Can he protect himself? Can he be with himself? Are you getting me? Can he bring peace with his enemies for himself? Who can do that? Can he give tithe? Can he build a house? Are you getting me? Now, I don't know how, I don't know how you come here and then you are comfortable. Every day you look at your pastor's wearing suit. And the thing is, the heat is much. If you understand that God is your provider, you understand that God is the one protecting you, giving you peace and all that stuff, you will now begin to do what? To build his house. So, so, if we have split units here, will it be a crime? Say we are students. If you decide to say, okay, we're going to get split units here, we'll get them here. Do you understand? 24-year-old boy in my church did something that I became scared, sir. Were you in Eagles Conference this year, uh, last year, sorry? I came with one car. Did you see it? You didn't see it. I came with a new Honda Cross Tour. That car was given to me by a 24-year-old boy in my church. The GMC I'm driving if you have converted to American vehicles, you have discovered that when they start um, 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 getting fault, particularly the AC, is very difficult to fix. You understand? Particularly the GMC Arcadia, it's very difficult to fix. You need some professionals or some companies to be able to do that. And I've not been able to see. So because of the lack of AC, during rainy season, it's difficult to drive that car. When it begins to rain, and you know, the car of that caliber you carry, and you are carrying cloth to be cleaning, there's a way it looks like. So I began to tell the Lord to see my affliction. I love the GMC with a passion. Very fine, slick car. But when it developed that fault, I started losing interest. And then I received an alert in my account. And when I checked my balance, it was still the old balance. I said, ah, is it 419? And I saw the name of the person who sent the, the money. So I called him. I said, did you send any money to my account? 
I'm seeing the figure, but I'm not seeing it drop. And they say, yes, that day he did. He said, and he had received a lot that the money had left his account. So I had to call my bank. I don't understand oh, what's happening here. I said, no, it's a banking procedure. That if your account have not received a specific kind of amount of money, you are not understanding. So let's leave this story. No, 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 no let's continue. You see, and when that kind of alert comes, you will need to confirm it and say that it is true, you are aware. So that when, if it's 419 money and they're coming to arrest you tomorrow, they will remind you that you are the one who asked us to drop the money. Do you get it? So the money dropped, boom. Do we understand? So if something drops in uh, Apostle Edu's account, it's not an offense. He has not become carnal. He has not backslided. Do you understand? So make some things drop at times. So the reason why God will make many of you here rich, wealthy, become millionaires, is not just so that you can be carrying shoulder. You can be a millionaire and worship maker. It will not remove the anointing. Now, do you understand? Why I'm saying this is this. When you make up your mind and say, Lord, we put split units here. And God sees your heart. He does not know whether you are a student or you are a working class or whatsoever. But as long as it's in your heart to do it, God will begin to open the doors. You get it? To make that happen. But the problem is that when you, you have it in your heart and the money begins to come, your heart begins to change. That's the problem God has. There was a passion that opened that door. There was a passion that brought that favor. Because you cried and said, God, we need... And then God says, okay, let me help you. And open the door. The money comes into your hand. I tell some people, I said, some of you are driving coffin, you don't know. You call it a car. Because the money was not given to you to buy that particular car. It was, you ask God, say, God, please, give me this money, let me buy this thing for your house. And then God gave you the money as a test. Because there's so much God wants to put in your hand. God does not have problem with blessing you and giving you material things, but he has problem with men he can trust. If God can't trust you, he can't entrust you. So we can easily, quickly make vows, quickly say things when it has not come. But when the thing enters our hand, our heart begins to drift. Do you understand? When you were praying and say, God, put split units here, you didn't remember that you needed to build a house in the village. You didn't have faith to think of to buy a jeep of 10 million. Are we getting it now? Now God put 10 million in your hand. The first thing God is expecting you to do with that money, if it was true, that it was split unit that was actually what was troubling you. you, you nobody will even know when, they'll just see people bringing split units in and fixing them. Can I pray for somebody here? In the name of the resurrected Jesus, may God begin to give you good motives clear motives, Amen. kingdom motives, Amen. and as they become strong in your heart as a body, may the Lord put what is in your heart in your hand. Amen. You don't want to receive it? You can say back to sender. Amen. I say may the Lord put in your hands the body that is in your heart. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sit down. Let's continue quickly. Are we together? Are we ready? Forget what you are seeing. When you start seeing millionaires of 20 years here, then you will now know that somebody came in here. Millionaire of 22 years old. 24 years old millionaires. Some of you are doing business right now and you, the business is so small. But little did you know that this coming is also what is going to push you into becoming an exporter. Becoming an importer. You don't know. Let the Lord give you understanding to see. There's a particular grace on my life. It is to make people rich. I know what I'm talking about. And I'm not boasting. I can give you instances. A young man called Solomon. He had never counted 100,000 all his life since he was born. And somebody gave him 100,000 naira. 
And he went and bought keyboard, bought generator, bought speakers for the fellowship he was attending. And the pastor invited me to the fellowship. And when I came for that fellowship, he told me about the young man. That one young man here, yeah, because I saw new speakers, new things. They were not much, but you will know that somebody added to what they were doing. I was no longer straining to talk. And I said, God will bless the person. And as I got up and I began to preach, the word of the Lord came to me strongly. And I walked up to the young man. And I said to him, 19 days from today, the Lord will change your story. Don't stand up here. I'm not that kind of thing. Do you get it? The Lord will do what? Change your story. And I left. The next morning, the wife woke up and told him, he says, we have been hearing what God has been doing through this man since. It's now time for us to prove whether the hand of God is truly upon him. Today remains 18 days. The countdown has begun. Seven days into the countdown, Solomon received a call from the village. A number that is not saved in his phone. He said, hello, who is this? He said, I'm calling from, it's from Kogi State, from Kaba. That um, is on Lu, that's um, Kogi West. And the person greeted in the language and said, they said, yeah, who is this? And he said, I am your father. He said, I don't have a father. The father I have disowned me 11 years ago. The father married another young girl and then the girl began to be stubborn to their mother. So they beat up the girl. You know what I'm saying? You see? If you don't have understanding, you will beat your father's second wife. You get it? So the father cursed him and his younger brother and, and disowned them. Solomon came into Abuja with a nylon bag. Nowhere to stay. So he was staying in uncompleted buildings and in mechanic workshops. When they come to a mechanic workshop, he'll be opening car doors to see the one that they didn't lock. Then he'll manage to sleep there early in the morning and he will sneak away. And if he cannot get a car to sleep in, he's sleeping in a computer building. Solomon will go in the morning to go and carry blocks or he'll go and farm. He was saving money. That's how he went back to do, HN, uh, to do ND and HND surveying. Did you service, came back to Abuja. In the days that Abuja was newly developing, the greatest people that make more money are surveyors, civil engineers, you know, architects, anything that relates to building. But Solomon couldn't get the job because the heavens were closed over him. His father had cursed him and disowned him. Solomon married his wife on credit. Do you know what I mean by marrying wife on credit? When the father was okay, take her and go. You are not stealing her, I know that, you know, but money is the issue. So when you have money, eh? So Solomon have his wife. <laughs> Solomon have a daughter, and he has not been able to go back. In Solomon's house, there are only two plastic chairs. They struggle to eat. Nobody has given Solomon 5,000 naira in his life. A surveyor. He's working, managing to survive. Before that word came. And the man on the phone said, I'm your, sorry. He said, I'm your father. Solomon said, I don't have father. He said, you have father. I'm the one who disowned you, and I'm the one that is reclaiming you. He said, and in case you don't want to hear me, I learned you are married now. You have a daughter. I will come to Abuja to look for you. He said, how did you get my number, by the way? He said, I have to go and look for your friends to give me your number. I said, what is the matter? He said, a man with white beards and white hair like wool appeared to me. And he said, call Solomon and bless him or I will kill you. I wish you understand what I'm saying. He says, to that effect and to this end that I'm calling you. So if you don't want to agree, me, I will, I will bless you by force. So he said, I reverse every word I have said and all the things that the enemy Had used me to say concerning you, I hereby reversed. You know when old men curse you and they want to reverse it, they put water in their mouth. 
And that was what the father was doing. Because a word of prophecy came. Because a man said, I will build the house of the Lord. Do you understand? Countdown continue. <coughs> on, the, on the 17th day of the countdown, there is a man, a very big man in Metama, who borrowed, who lent money, 300,000 to Solomon. And since then, Solomon had not heard from him. He had not heard from Solomon. The man just called Solomon. Solomon said, hey, wahala today. Solomon looked at his call. He said, I'm in trouble. What is the trouble? He said, the man, that man I told you, he borrowed the money to try to use, but because there's a cost, the money just... The man called, so he managed to pick. He said, my Yaomi. And the man said, Solomon, where are you? He said, I'm in my house in Kubwa. He said, can you come to my house immediately in Metama? I need to see you urgently. He said, okay, sir, I'm coming. He told the wife, sit down. This is how to go to police station. Eh? As I'm going like this now, if I don't come back again, at least remember that, leave your phone on. I will do one thing. Before they lock me and collect my phone, I will give you a call to tell you which police station. Don't let hungry meet me there. Don't let them, you know that kind of thing. So he was going with that mindset. Between, if you know Abuja well, going towards Mutama from Kubwa, you pass through Guarimpa. While around Guarimpa area, his phone rang. Say, Solomon, where are you? And he says, sir, I'm around Guarimpa. He says, okay, look for any car shop around there. Come down and go and look for a clean Nissan Nextera and come with the, the, the sellers, the dealers. Come with them to my house. So he came down, looked for Nissan Nextera, clean one, and obeyed as the man said, and he came to the man's house. So the man was inspecting the car and discovered that the car was repainted. So he was not asked, him, why did you repent this car? They said, well, did they repent it to an arrest? He said, carry your car, get out of my house. You can't wait to lie to me. He said, Solomon, enter my car and let us go. So they drove to another car shop. And they said, well, Solomon, there is that Nissan Estera I brought the other time, I wanted to buy it for you. Now, how do you explain somebody you are owing 300,000 naira that you have not told how to pay, you have not begged, and then the man is now, do you follow what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> the man now said, it was you I wanted to buy it for, but because those people lied, I've brought you here and I make your choice. You know, poverty is a very terrible mentality. It's not only a spiritual, it's his mentality. It will reconfigure your way of thinking. You know what the boy went to pick? Toyota Camry Pensu. So the man looked at him, looked at him, looked at him, and just shake his head. He said, what is wrong with you? You are a surveyor. What do you need Toyota Pensu for? The reason why I wanted to buy Xterra for you is that it's a high car. You can use it as a private car. You can use it for your job. You understand what I'm saying? I said, why not look for something higher or something like that? I was thinking it would pick like a Hilux or something. But this time, you know, when you receive sense, you can think normally now. Solomon said, oh, oh, is that what you are saying, sir? <laughs> so Solomon went and looked for um, 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 a Tundra, Toyota Tundra. Uh, is it iForce V8? That was the latest then. And then the man bought it in millions. In Solomon's name. Solomon was looking at him saying, is this a dream? The Bible said when the Lord they get, turned again the captivity of Zion, they were like them that dream. And their mouths were filled with laughter. And even the hidden said their God has done this for them. Somebody's story is about to change. I didn't plan to go this way. God bear me witness. But if God brought this story out, then it means that he wants to change stories here. You see, my life is a compendium of testimonies. So as I'm teaching, I don't, any, if I turn here, it's, test, it's like that. So, Solomon, no, sit down, sit down, sit down, please. So, uh, um, Solomon could not believe what he was saying. And the man now looked at him and said, that 300,000 naira, you are owing me, uh, take it. So, they dash him, car dash him money. So, that's how he drove away from there. And then he came back home. The wife was waiting for a call. This he called his son, Tundra. He said, Solomon. Have you gone to steal a car again? <laughs> Solomon said, No, it's my car. He said, Try or call me Kilo Day. You know, there's an expectation of people who have on you that they will never believe you will crawl. They, they just look at you and size you and just put a, a, a mark. God will break every man's expectation over you. Yeah. That is totally negative and not near what God has planned for your life. 
it doesn't matter who look down on you. The Bible says, who is it that saith a thing and they come to pass when the Almighty has not commanded? So let them sit in their coven and decide. Let them sit in their drinking bottle and decide. But God will change somebody's story. Are we still here? So that's how Solomon took the car home and then neighbors started asking the wife, Tell only motor, who has motor and the rest? Solomon said, the wife says, my husband's car, they say, go and sit down. I survey your work, no great work again, don't talk to the driver. He's not driving, you want to look for a driving job. Car stay in the house one day, you know, and like that, I say, ah, it's like, it's true. Uh, you, know, you know, if you came with your gas car to post, you must run back, the car slept over. The wife came and started asking him. And Solomon says, one man oh, that gave me 19 days. And that today is the 17th day, to, uh, the, the, today is the 18th day, and like that. Long story cut short, the next day, the last day, was his daughter's birthday. A colleague in his office who had never given him five naira, pure water. That time, pure water was five naira. Never given him pure water before. Called him, say, Solomon, I learned today's your daughter's birthday. He said, yes. It's okay. Uh, what, do you, what do you want me to give you? What don't you have in the house? Let me give you. Someone say, have in the house. Okay, I have pot, I have stove, I have spoon. <laughs> the man said, okay, do you have chair? He said, no, no, I don't have chair, I don't have chair. It's plastic chair I have. The man said, okay, go to, and look for it. You know, Solomon has become wise now. So when he went to plaza. <laughs> it was a, a chair called Senator. Up to today, I don't know what that chair was. They said there was a chair called Senator. That he bought. So he priced it, I think 100 and something. At that time, the man came and paid, and then he told the man, say, oh God, even rug loaded the house. <laughs> so the man also added rug. And in 19 days, a man who entered Abuja with nylon bag for more than 11 to 13 years became a millionaire. And his life changed. So my friend who invited me. Now he insisted that the next month they do it in the monthly meeting. You are the one that will still come. I was staying in Zaria then. So coming to Abuja was a very heavy task. So I, I, I obliged him. But I had to travel to Enugu for a meeting. His meeting is every Sunday evening. <coughs> My friend helped me down in Enugu to preach for him on Sunday morning. Which magic will I perform? <coughs> to be in Abuja before five o'clock. There's no magic anyway. We finish service and one young girl, if you see the lady, if you see the lady, young girl, if I should bow her head, just gonna say I want to see you, I shown her. Say, what is that? You show me. I don't think you know how to leave now and you're telling you want to see me. See me for what? So the pastor now came and called me and said, please see one person before. I said, you know I'm hurrying. I'm thinking, I, can, I, I, don't, I can't even meet up, but at least let me make the attempt. Let me let them know that I was on the way and then they didn't make it. He said, see this, see this, my daughter. It's very dear to my heart. I entered it was the same guest. Okay, okay, what is it? So I only came to beg pastor to oblige me to drop you in the park where you are going to. That Sunday, the next Monday was the non Monday of inauguration of senators and House of Rep members. You know, when they elect them, they say they have inauguration in Abuja. I just say that to make you understand the level of traffic towards Abuja that day. So the guy carried me. We went outside. I said, you want to carry me? He said, I said no problem. It makes my job easier. He said, which hotel were you staying? I said, no, I stayed in one of my son's house in the barrack. So... As we were coming, and my son brought my bag out to the front of the gate, entered the vehicle with us. Uh, so I was telling her, I'm going to Peace Master. And she said, Okay, let me take you there. So as we were driving, my son said, But this is not the road to Peace Master. And she said, It's not Peace Master. And she said, Allow me to reach there. She was heading towards the airport. In fact, the, the first day, I lied not under heaven. When I came to her car, it was a Jeep, Murano Jeep. Eh? That was the first time I entered Murano. You don't understand something. <laughs> when the girl was reversing, I was expecting her to do. I'm a very good driver. I was her to do, and she was not doing anything like that. The girl was just driving. How is she seeing her back? Only for me to look at my friend, I saw television. I say, Jesus, hey. God punish poverty.
He was just looking at her back like this and was just going, eh? eh? So we're going, I didn't argue with her again, no. I, I was humbled. Ha. Huh. I just said, one, welcome, welcome to Enugu Airport. I said, okay. If you see airport, airport was jam packed. As we were going, it was calling one guy, okay, a big no. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Pastor, uh, Abuja, na, 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 na. And he's must travel. He said, Madam, they are on it. He said, let the plane wait. Hey. Hmm? That was the first time I saw a plane waiting for me. When I end, if you see the people's face in the plane, you know that they are not happy with me. Wait, is this this thing that kept us waiting? It's not me, oh, not that girl. The, the ticket they gave me was bearing barista Chuku di something. Not my name, oh. They stopped somebody from traveling for me to travel. God will break protocol for your sake. Amen. Are you listening to me? Then when I was coming down, she now gave me a check. When I checked, they checked 50,000. 50,000 at that time is like 500,000 today. My hand was shaking. I said, Did you, is it a mistake? That's how I came down in Abuja. Then one of my sons came and carried me, and that's how they drove me to the meeting. The hall that is just like from here to here, sir, if you see crowd that came 19 days, you don't understand on the account of that guy's testimony. We, Jesus. We have to do open air. Do you understand? I can tell you different stories in this direction. But I just said that to make somebody understand. That when God brings people your way, there are certain things in his heart before he sends them. But whether those things will happen or not happen is going to be determined by how you relate with what they tell you. Relate with the value you attach to them. They are Azimors and they are Azimors. You don't believe me? There's an Azimor that will carry that. What is that called? That thing? Oji. Oji. And it's coming. Abi? To the market, everybody is running away. Then when they come to the market, you know, or to the house, they say, send him, you go and deliver the message. There's an easy mother standing in the shrine and knock his OG on the ground and appear there. Okay. Maybe you don't understand what I'm saying. So let's leave it there. <laughs> they are both easy moms, but they are not operating on the same frequency. So when you, you, you understand the value attached to the both of them will determine what will leave them to you. <sighs> the Lord will help us. Are we still here? Praise the Lord. Are you being blessed? So there was a part Jacob needed to play and there's a part God needs to play. God's part is to provide the supernatural provision, protection, peace, presence, right? Preservation. And it was Jacob's part to do what? to present the tent and to build the house of God. Anything you give towards soul winning and soul development is building the house of God. It could be a physical structure, it could be towards a program to make, you understand, as long as you are building, you are building better. Can we go to Genesis 32 verse 12? I guess I'm getting it correctly. I didn't plan to pass this route this morning. But I don't know which anointing is dragging me like this. I didn't plan this route. Is this 32? Go to 31, let's see. 31. 31, 12, let's try. Go back, maybe 11. Let's see the, go back. 
No, 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 sorry. Go to like 13 or 14. Okay, so I want to look for where the Lord appeared to Jacob and began to speak to him to go back. 32? 32, 12. Okay, so it was 32, 12. So how come I didn't get it? But I also to open 12 before. 31, 13. Good, give me 31, 13. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you very much. Now, what did he say? I'd like us to read it together. One, two, three, go. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. What did he call himself? The God of Abraham, thy father? The God of Isaac? What did he say? So it means that if you claim that if I do these things, I will become your God, then go back and fulfill your vow. So I'm now your God. You see? But the issue in this matter was that God was not looking for tight or for a building from Jacob. God was looking for Israel from Jacob. I wish somebody heard me. Do you understand? But God accepted Jacob on his terms. Shebe, you say, if I do my part, you will give me ten, uh, one tenth, Abi, and then you will build a house. No problem. I've done my part now, so go back and build the house. But the problem is that if he's going back to Bethel, he will meet Esau. Do you get it? So the primary reason why God reminded him of the vow was not basically because of the fulfillment of it, even though it's important. But the reason why God was asking him to go back to Bethel was that the journey to Bethel involved meeting it, Esau. It is in that day that you now understand that uh, it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by God's spirit. Did you notice that how did Jacob a man who uh, he paid two bride price for two sisters, right? He labored 14 years for the love of his life. A man whom his wages were changed 10 times. 10 times that means fullness of changing. The man who had no prospect in this life to ever amount to anything because of the kind of man he was having, his uncle. Do we get it? I want to help you understand certain things this morning. Have you not, when you see animals, maybe dog, cats, you know, okay, let's say dog, cows, goats, you have brown, you have black, basically, and then you have white, most of the time. Then you have spotted and you have uh, speckled. That is, it has one color like this, one color the other side, not dotted, but it's either dotted or speckled, right? Now, among the dotted and speckled, if you bring them amongst maybe pure brown or pure white or pure black, which one is more? Put speckled and dotted on one side and put pure color on one side. Which one is more? Pure color. Now, Abraham came to Laban. I said, Abraham, Jacob. And he says, Sir, I don't want you to pay me salary again. From today, any animal that give birth to any speckle or dotted animal will be my own. Are you seeing it? Every clean animal, pure color that comes is your own. So go around the flock, sheep and cow, and right? Take every speckled animal away. Hand them over to your children. Let them travel three days journey. So there will not be a mistake of one throw from here into this other one. Let them travel three days' journey away from me and then allow me to travel my own way. But from today, let there be an agreement between me and you that any speckled animal, any um, 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 spotted animal that is found in the flock is my own. Let's agree. Ah, labor say, you, 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 you go school. You, you start business. 
So his mind was to cheat Jacob, right? But meanwhile, when Jacob encountered the Lord, what did the Lord, what did he demand from the Lord? If you would take me over and do what? Protect me and give me what to eat and what to wear. Correct? So it was God's responsibility, uh, responsibility to prosper Jacob. So an angel had to be dispatched from heaven to show Jacob the technology of how to make the impossible to become possible. We know the rest of the story. Is that correct? At the end of the day, the wealth of Laban was transferred to Jacob. True or false? That is what is called wealth transfer in the Bible, not forex. If the idea didn't come from God, it cannot transfer wealth supernaturally. May the Lord give you understanding. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not trial by error. Did Jacob leave the cows to go and start to cut more block? It was the instruction the Lord gave him that he obeyed that brought a transfer. The countenance of the sons of Laban were no longer good towards Jacob. The countenance of Laban was not good towards... Are we listening here? And at the end of the day, what happened? God now appeared to him. I fulfilled my part. So am I now qualified to be adopted as your God? I'm the God of Bethel. Meanwhile, what God was setting for him was an ambush. When he was now going back to Bethel, he now remembered that there is an obstacle that only Jehovah Wake that young man. Sit well. Are you listening to me now? Only Jehovah can deliver him from that. No, don't worry. He has heard already. Don't worry. Don't worry. Hmm? Praise God. Only Jehovah can deliver him from Esau. What he didn't remember was that he said that if you bring me back in this way in peace, Did you notice what he did? You know the story, right? So there's no need to go there. Send the first concubines, <coughs> send the wives and the children. But when they came to the fort to cross, he said, You go, I'm coming. I have unfinished business with the Lord. Right? And he began to wrestle with the Lord. You promised me to give me peace. On my way back, give me peace. The Lord was not answering him. Give me peace, he said, but I give you gold. Give me peace, he said, but I give you silver. Give me peace, he said, I give you cattle. Give me peace, I've made you a millionaire. Give me peace, I've given you clothes to wear. Give me peace. They were struggling like that money was coming. And Jacob knew that time was going. And if they, you understand what I'm saying? Now? Have you ever come to God and then you are asking for your own thing and God is waiting for you to do his own thing? Anna will go all the way to Shiloh every year crying because she was peninead by peninea. Tears every year. And God was looking at her. He said, Ndo, Ndo, sorry. Oh, take bucket. Whip, whip, whip. When you think reach her bucket, so you can keep it. Next year, come and complete it. When the bucket full, God will pour it on the ground. He said, I've seen your tears. Let it turn to blood. Oh. She kept crying until she understood that God had a need. I will get there. Let's let's not. <laughs> Are we still here? Yes. Are you ready for this year? Yes. Are you ready for this decade? Yes. And the Bible said they began to break. And the angel said, "Let me go." He said, "Go." You have not killed me now. Say so you want to go, because it's either you kill me. Or you give me peace, protection against Esau. He said, I've been waiting for you to reach this desperate point. But let me know how sincere and desperate you are. He said, what is your name? Excuse me. You know, at times when I read some portion of scriptures, I begin to doubt whether it was God who said that thing. The all-knowing God. He looked at Abraham. He said, now I know that indeed you fear me. God didn't know before. He wanted Abraham to do what? To prove it. 
She said, Jacob, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. I am a supplanter. God will never bring change to a man that do not own up. You have problem with lesbianism, but you will come to church and walk as if you don't go to the toilet. You don't know how to urinate. Don't worry. But today, God has brought you to the threshing floor. Are you listening to me now? You still come to church here, and when you are praying, people think that you are high in the Holy Ghost. They don't know that you were high from something else. I said, hey, this brother can pray. You don't know that before he came in here, he branched somewhere. No, the Bible said they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they were like drunken men. You can be drunk with Igbo, you can be drunk with whiskey, you can be drunk with vodka. But the Lord gave you understanding. Many things can make somebody high. And then you put Tom Tom and mouth freshener and come to church and you are a clean brother. We tie. Are we still here? Say, what is your name? Say, my name is Jacob. Can you put it on the board? I expect you to have gone there. The encounter is there. And he said unto him, what is thy name? He said, my name is what? Jacob. Here's the next verse. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but shall, but Israel. For what? As a prince had thou power with God and with men and had prevailed. Give me the next verse. Some of us, this is where we'll get up and run and say, hey, I'm the next prince in town. I have power with God. I have power with men. And Jacob asked him, And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he says, Wherefore, it is that thou dost ask after my name. And he blessed him there. The next verse. And Jacob called the name of the place, what? Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. The next verse. And he passed over Penuel, and rose, and the sun rose up on him, and he halted upon his staff. Yes? Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the, the sinews which shrank, which is upon the hollow of, that, the, of the tie unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's tie in the sinews that shrank. Did you catch that? So before the angel of God decided to change his name, he did something to him. You didn't hear that. Before God can change a man's name, he will do something to his heart. Will you allow God to do something to you today so that he can change your name? The prayer point they have led you to pray for 13 years now is, Lord, change my story, change my name. Abi, But he has not changed your heart. Why did God touch the, the, the tie of the tendon of his hip? Any medical student here will tell us that this is the strongest muscle in the body, which signifies human strength, the flesh. Until God touch your flesh and you can no longer rely on the flesh, he can't change your name. You do notice that from that day, Jacob was limping. His strength and his confidence was no longer where on his tie, but where? On the staff. The Lord spoke to Peter in John chapter 20. No, 21. I think from verse 15 or so. And around 20, verse 18, he told Peter, he says, when you were a young man, you went wherever you feel like to go. Hallelujah. He said, but when you became an old man, another will lead you. You see? But the leading at this point is that the man will not lead you to where you want to go. Can you put it on the board? John chapter 20, 21, sorry. Give me around verse 18 or so. You know the verse of scripture I'm talking about? 
Good. He said, very, very, I said unto thee, when thou was what? Young. Young means when you had strength. The strength of some girls here is their beauty. And as long as the beauty is there, they can get whatever they want. You don't understand? A maker must form Mubuna. And guy man must work. Okay? So I'm not doing anything with him, but he just like me. So let's be collecting the phone and the money. You believe that as long as a maker is there, your school fees will be paid. As long as a maker, you get what I'm trying to bring about. So your, your strength, I mean, your, your, where's your strength? In your beauty. Whatever you say, mean a guy, man. Some say, I can farm. You know, many things, your strength is on something. On your skill. Like that, I must make it as long as this is me. But if God is going to do a work in your life, you must touch that strength. I've seen fine girls at 35 on. You know what I mean by that? That are not yet married. Their fasting life is excellent. God has been waiting for them to fast since 18 years old. They didn't have time to fast. But you see that fasting bar? It must be part of the condiments that God must forge in your life. So, but if you want it at 35, no problem. You get it? So as you're boxing on your beauty, he will not fight you. And if God wants to help you quick, he will allow you to have one acid and then one glass, he just cut you like this. You become a Muslim by force. You are in hijab and niqab. In that day, any man that come your way, you will say yes. <coughs> Of us here who are very we are strong in the mind like me. Ah, God knows how to handle you. He will allow you to cram very well. It's in the examination hall, he will disgrace you. Then you will now begin to beg for mercy. Have, have you seen your memory disk flash before? You say, eh? <laughs> the genius is blank. I'm Burova. So I go clear. Then you now know that the race is not to the swift. Neither is the battle to the strong. But strength. Or what? The opportunity happens to all of them. I mean, they, I'm forgetting that. Time and power. Time and chance happen to them all. Sorry. It's not of him that will let or run it, but of him that showed mercy. Touch your brain. See, let's do it. They're all the first class you have been nurturing to come out with. You are begging now for tutu. <laughs> Bego, say, please, sir, please let him know better. Third class, I beg you. <laughs> when God wants to <coughs> break your heart the more, it will be just two marks that will bring you to third class. So when people want to talk about people who have brain, you know, you, you are brainy, you know it. But your certificate does not. So when you want to talk, you, any of your boasting, you will not go near your certificate. You not, when you want to boast or that, you can, talk, you can talk about how you are fine. You know, you can talk about it, but you can't talk about your academics. Because it's not something to boast about. God has already broken that. Then you now discover that to get job must be by God. Then when God gives you that job in that office, can you be proud? You will be humble. You understand? So he said, before I change your name from Jacob to Israel, what do I need to do? So, you can only bear the name Israel as a limping man. You can only bear the name as a prince that have had power with God. Only a man that lean on the staff of Jehovah. If the staff is not what is leading you, but your strength, you can't bear the name. It's one of the two. You choose one. And in the lockdown, the Lord walked into my room and touched my shoulder. And they said, you are Jacob, turn Israel. The Lord told me that word 20 years ago. And he came back with an encounter in my room. You are Jacob, turn Israel. And I gave to you Rachel. And I told you that your wife is Rachel. 
and you shall have two sons Joseph and Benjamin there will be a three years gap before them because I've called you to pioneer a new family of priesthood you know my sons now Joseph before I married I've already received scan result from heaven so it's a waste of money to go and pay for scan when my wife was pregnant they say it's a male they say it's twins I say no 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 you want to do scan you can give me the money I'll tell you the result when she gave birth to the child we didn't have money for naming ceremony so as they were cleaning her up to wait for placenta to come down I've named the child has poverty brought you to that kind of level name the child in the hospital with blood your name shall be called Joseph according to the word of the Lord we didn't have money to buy to buy baby food for it was glucose the boy rejected it today there's nothing the boy say he wants I can't give him Am I talking to somebody here? When we came out of the hospital, people say, when is the name ceremony? I say, which name is ceremony? We have done it in the hospital. We have named the boy. His name is Joseph. You are free to call him Joseph from now. Give birth to Benjamin. I named him also in the hospital. Not because they were, were that poor then, but so that we we'll just fulfill all righteousness. Our own name ceremony is always in the hospital. May the Lord give you understanding. Do we understand? A man who is a prince that has found power with God and with men and prevail. He can bless Almond Ra and not melt. I wish you understand what I just said. So the Lord gave us the lockdown as an act of mercy, as an act of intervention. As an act to, to help the church, particularly the church in Nigeria, because of our prophetic destiny. <coughs> you know, we are the apostolic face of Africa. We are God's firstborn, as long as the church in this region is concerned. We are the ones that will take the gospel from Nigeria to West Africa, to South Africa, to East Africa, to North Africa, and to the continents of the world. Are you listening to me now? If we are not accurate, Anything will export will go there like that. And God will not bend the quality control. I wish somebody is understanding me. The quality control level must be dealt with. So one of the things that COVID came to do was so that the quality control can be normal and right. So in the midst of the lockdown where people were dying and the rest, God was giving you a window to fast, a window to pray, a window to break forth into a new season. Anybody who took advantage of that season, their new year began August last year. But people who didn't, you get it? The window of mercy is still open into this January, into some, you understand the point? Because God wants to raise an army of accurate people that are in alignment with his will and with his purpose. Reuben was given 40 years. The church in Nigeria was given 40 years. And in the day that Jehovah was supposed to stand and make a decree over the church in Nigeria and curse them and said, you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are unstable as water. You shall not excel. God now said, I give you the second chance. It's a corporate, it's a sec a corporate second chance. Because the church in Nigeria had failed God. The resources that God brought to the church in Nigeria, there was no true apostolic father that would cause a true cross-pollination of the resources. That the churches that were born in the north, more resources will be sent there and then they will help them to build churches and give support to them. There's a synergy of unity within the body. And even the Boko Haram and every other Islamic militant who understand that these people are united, we cannot penetrate them. But they will come and carry somebody from 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 Garikida, go and slaughter. Carry some from Chibok, go and slaughter. The fathers of faith, because you are sitting in an AC, you are quiet, you are comfortable. Nobody is talking. It will soon come to our doorstep if we don't do something. If God does not do a radical thing, what will happen is that they will be taking us one by one until we are all taken out. But because of God's agenda, God will not allow such a thing to be the issue. So God is raising a new army. God is displacing men. God is 
dethroning men. God is rejecting men. God is demoting some so I can promote some people. May God find you in his agenda. So help me look at your neighbor and say you are welcome to morning service. I've been able to get your attention now. So can we look at the Bible? You are welcome. Are you ready? Oh, we should close now. Let's share the grace. Are we still here? Luke chapter number 13. Luke 13. Also. Luke 13. Give me that water. <clears throat> Give me verse 6. We read to verse 9. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon. And what happened? That's the condition of the church. The Lord planted a vineyard in Nigeria. And when he came at the time he was supposed to run find fruit, he found none. He only met a confused generation who do not know their left from their right, who do not know who is the father and who is not a father, who do not know who is a, an Ezemo on suit and who is a man of God. You try to tell them that this man that is prophesying there is not prophesying by God. He said, but the word he speaks comes to pass. Does because the word comes to pass make it from God? When in the last days, and Jesus Christ said, even the very day elect, if they don't take time, they will be deceived. And he found none. I don't want to press in on that. You understand already. The church in Nigeria have not bought the fruit of the reason why God planted the African church. With Nigeria as the concentration camp. The largest population of the black race concentrated anywhere on the face of the earth is Nigeria. Do you agree with me? All over the world, go anywhere, you see black people. Check the concentration of them, you discover. I went, I went to South Korea in, in 1997. In Korea, in Seoul town, we met, we met nine Nigerians. Six, Abi, six of them were Igbos. Two were Yoruba, one was Benin. In, South, in Seoul. <coughs> the ones that gave us, we, we, we stayed in Korea till we began to look for, we started longing to come back home just for food. Let's leave that side. They were the ones that gave us Nigerian stew and rice. We ate, we knelt down and said, God, thank you. <laughs> May the Lord give you understanding. Hallelujah. So yesterday we began to look at two priesthoods. Do you remember? The priesthood of the house of Eli and of his sons, basically, and then the priesthood of Samuel. I hope you know that Samuel grew to the point, the Bible says that he was established a prophet of God in Israel. And he, from Dan to Beersheba, everybody knew him as a prophet and his word never fell to the ground. The question is, did Hophni and Phineas have the same potential? Did they have the same environment? Did they have the same circumstances to have become prophets and priests of God in the land? The same Bible school they attended. The same church they worshipped in. Two became crooks. One became a genuine prophet. Are we still here? There was a need in Israel already. That was why the womb of Anna was locked. Anna did not become barren because she was a barren woman. The Bible says, if you shall serve the Lord your God diligently and hearken unto his word. He said, I will bless your bread and I will what? bless your water. And I will, none of the diseases that are upon the Egyptian will I put upon you. And he says, and none of you shall be barren. Neither shall you cast forth your young. And even your livestock. God was, was, was concerned about the miscarriage of your dog. It's not a healing service, so let's leave it there. 
Do you understand? God was so meticulous to have mind that your cheek cannot miscarry. Your chicken. Then how much more you that have a covenant with him. So if your womb is not open at a particular point in time, instead of going down, begin to look for a type of to drink and all those other things they give people to drink. Eh? Find out from God. Say, why is my womb blocked? The Bible says, in that day, the word of the Lord was cast in Israel. There was no open vision. You know why? The priesthood had issues. Have you not noticed that the priesthood in Nigeria had issues? How can Boko Haram have a field day in Nigeria when we have we claim we have leading prophets? We have major one, major two, Lieutenant Colonel three. And all the prophetic gifting of all the majors and minors is to prophesy money from your pocket. It's in the day that the word of the Lord was cast and there was no open vision. Is somebody here? God was in the need of a priest after his own heart. A priest that will do the bidding of God. A priest that will serve the purpose of Jehovah. Because the present priesthood had been sacked. Do you know that for 40 years of Paul's reign, of King Saul's reign, he served God for two years. But he sat on the throne for 40 years. After the second year, he was sacked. Just like you were talking the other time. The king was weighed, mene mene tekel of her sin, and was found wanting and was weightless. He has weight on earth, but in the spirit realm, he was like a feather. So he was still the high priest in Israel. His children were still the priests in the physical, but heaven has rejected them. And because heaven has rejected them, heaven had to lock the womb of Anna. Anna must give birth to a child called Samuel. But the day Anna will give birth to the child is the day she stops crying. And stops seeing that the only reason why she needed a child was for revenge. Was to shut the mouth of her enemies. Was to that she can now say, Unto. As long as that was the motive, Anna's womb would remain closed. When Anna now understood that there's a level of exchange in heaven where you can give birth to your first child, the one that broke forth, and you will now say, Lord, I hand him over to you. In the day that Anna had that understanding and made that vow, that if you give me a child, I will, because I have been waiting for you since then. Because Eli and his sons have disappointed me, I've been looking for a replacement, and the replacement is to come from your womb. Are we still here? Meanwhile, you read where the Bible says that they will not hearken unto the word of their father. Why? Because God will slay them, right? So all that period of warning, all that period of wanting them to repent, God was giving to them. God was also bringing a replacement. They didn't know that Samuel in the temple was their replacement if they don't repent. The period of 40 years of Nigerian church history, God was giving the church in Nigeria a room to repent. I wish somebody heard what I'm saying. And God was waiting and waiting to see if the church will come to their senses. And while that kind of church was being raised, God began to, to, to mark some certain people and send them into the wilderness. Mark certain people and put them in obscurity somewhere. Mark certain people and will not allow them to mingle with the mainstream flow of Pentecostalism. You know the reason why? So that they will not be corrupted with Pentecostal Christianity. There are many people that are in hiding, you don't even know. It's from this year you begin to hear their name. It's from this year you begin to hear their voice. It's from this year that the angels of heaven will begin to blow their trumpet. And instead of hearing a sound, you hear a name. 
It's a time that God wants to announce his precious jewels on the face of the earth. His jokers he has kept in the cave that have not bowed their knees to bow. That day has come when the men, the technocrats of heaven will appear on the scene. Then you now begin to question and ask, how come we're not hearing this person's name again? How come we didn't hear of this one before now? Because the day had not come. There were some of them who would have gone to outside country since before now. Doors open. But when they wanted to go, God said, it's not time. And they obeyed God and they remained. They wanted to, 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 to announce themselves. And God said, no, you don't announce yourself. I announce you. Stay there. And they stayed. Those who refused and said, I must announce myself. And try to do everything. They were everywhere shouting, fire. Shout fire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let us see how the fire will enter into this decade. It's not noise. Let me tell your neighbor, say it's not noise. So I say the dispensation of where there was no open vision, the word of the Lord was cast. The eyes of the priest was blind. It was dim, right? And he was obsessed physically. That and 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 and, sorry, and the priest is obeyed physically had come to an end. That era, that dispensation ended in 2021. Do you understand? 31st December 2020 that dispensation ended you can no longer afford to be a priest of Jehovah in this day and your eyes are blind you can no longer be afford to be a priest of Jehovah in this day and be obeyed you cannot, you, you cannot be a priest of the Bible said the mouth of the priest shall preserve knowledge if you don't have knowledge you cannot be a priest of Jehovah in this day the day of the priesthood had come that has changed it's a priesthood according to the template of the kingdom the two kind of priesthood that was presented was by the sons of Eli and, the, uh, and Samuel. They lived in the same place under the same father and had the same opportunities either to be corrupted or to be faithful to God. Do you remember yesterday? Put it in Genesis, uh, first Samuel chapter, chapter 2. Give me verse. Give me verse 20, 24. No? You see, and I will find for myself. No, not, I'm not looking for here yet. Go. Where, where you say I will find for myself a faithful priest? A priest faithful. Please watch this now. 35. Please watch this carefully. Watch this now. We will soon close. Don't worry. I know you already. All your body language, you understand. And I will raise me up what? So you see the contrast between the priest that God was looking for and the priest that were already on ground. The father, we'll go back to that same 24. You see the contrast. He said, And I will raise me up what? A faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house. And he shall walk before me, my anointed forever. Praise the Lord. That what? That we do according to that which is in the heart of the Lord and that which is in the mind of God. That's the kind of priest that will survive in this new decade. Are you listening to me? The Lord came to the fig tree and he bore no fruit. He could find no fruit. For 40 years, the Lord had been planting the church in Nigeria, anointing it with giftings, anointing it with men, importing all kind of apostles, prophets, and different kind of people to bring, you know, equipping and, 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 and sustenance and maturity and stability to the church. But it's still a baby church. No fruit. Hallelujah. So it was 